Hi, I'm Kate from Nancy's Notions. Today I'd like to show you how to prepare, cut, and create bias tape in a few short steps. Creating bias tape is an essential sewing technique for garment construction, quilting, and home decorating. I'll also show you how you can use bias tape for quilt binding around curved corners. I'd like to review just a few basic tools that I like to use when I'm creating bias tape. Rotary cutting mat, ruler, rotary cutter, a scissors, marking pen or pencil, a few pins, and also the bias tape maker. I'm using just the one inch width today for this demonstration, but there are a variety of widths available. I'm just going to quickly review grain lines that are in fabric. A straight of grain runs parallel to the selvage and there's very little stretch, almost no stretch at all. Many quilting patterns call for cross grain cuts which run perpendicular to the selvage edge and those have a little bit more stretch. You can see that fabric ripple, that means it's stretching. And the bias runs at an angle to both the straight of grain and the cross grain in conjunction with the cross grain and straight of grain. So you have stretch in this direction. You can see how much that really does stretch out. You also have stretch from edge to edge. It's going to be the same amount of stretch. So what I'm going to do is take advantage of that stretch for our bias tape. I always start with a ruler that has a 45 degree angle printed on it. That just makes it much easier for cutting bias tape. And I have that laid right along the selvage edge on that 45 degree line. And I'm going to cut my first cut. Now for the bias tape maker that I showed, this is a one inch bias tape maker. So I would cut my bias strip about two inches wide. After my first cut, I'm going to do a little bit of folding. This is going to help manage all this fabric. I'm going to fold the bias edge right onto itself. And then I can gently, we're going to spin it around so that I cut comfortably and just smooth the fabric. You never want to stretch the fabric at this point. So you do be a little gentle. A lot of pulling at the fabric when you're trying to cut bias strips can just distort those strips a little too much. So for my one inch bias tape maker, I'm going to cut my bias strips approximately two inches wide and we'll cut several strips. I'm also going to cut a few strips that are two and a half inches wide to show you just real briefly a binding. With my strips cut, I'm ready to start sewing, but I'm going to make sure that I get my seams as accurate as possible. So with just two strips, these actually line up really nicely where if I put right sides together, I'm going to have a very easy seam to stitch. Sometimes you won't have that. Sometimes the ends of the strips are just the opposite. So what I do is simply place right sides together, making sure that one strip goes in a horizontal direction, one strip goes in a vertical direction, and that the angle that the two strips form is square. You can check that with a ruler simply by placing the ruler right in that corner and double checking. When you're comfortable with the accuracy, sometimes I'll do a pin just at that inner corner. This kind of tells me that I need to stitch parallel with the pin. And if you'd like, you can certainly mark with a fabric pen or pencil. And I'm going to, on this set of strips, I'm going to mark my stitching line and just place the ruler from inner corner to inner corner. Mark with the marking pen and we have a stitching line to follow. I'm ready to continue adding strips. I try to get my bias strips all pinned together and ready to stitch at one time then. So this is still pinned, but you can see how I'm building my bias strip. So just make sure that you have a square corner there and I'm going to pin at that inner corner 
That way I know I need to mark and then stitch parallel with the pin. And we'll do another marked seam line here. And you would continue adding all your strips until you reach the amount that you need for your project. And now we're ready to start sewing. So now I've got all my strips prepped. I can just chain sew. I'm going to start with my first seam. Once I get to the end of that seam, I bring up my next set of strips that are pinned, ready to stitch. So I've stitched from one to the next, and I would continue all the way down for the length of my bias tape. Now with my scissors, I'm going to trim off the excess seam allowance, trimming it to an approximate quarter inch. Once I have all the seam allowance trimmed down, I'm ready to press. And you can do a quick check on how it looks by just opening it up a little bit. At the ironing board, press the seams open. If your bias strip was just a square cut end, what you would want to do is simply cut an angle. And it doesn't need to be a perfect 45 degree angle. Just enough that that point will feed right into the bias tape maker. And you can see the point is just starting to peek out. If it doesn't cooperate right away, use the little pin to help encourage that through and we're ready to press. When you're pressing the bias tape, try to keep the iron tip closer to the opening of the bias tape maker. That way the fabric gets pressed almost instantly as soon as it exits the bias tape maker. I like to use steam when I'm pressing. Many quilters and sewers that I know prefer a dry iron. As long as you're getting a nice crisp press, steam or dry iron is just fine. Earlier, I had cut two and a half inch wide strips. I've sewn them together. I've now got them pressed, meeting the long cut edges. I'm just going to show you how I pin bias binding around a curved corner because you don't ever want to stretch. I'll start by pinning the straight edge. And then when I get to the corner, I'm going to allow the binding to actually ripple at the inside of my project. I'll keep the outer cut edge smooth and neat. Don't try to pin out that little ripple. You need that extra fabric when you're turning the binding to the opposite side. And I'll continue to pin. And then you would sew as you normally would for a quilt binding. But don't be afraid of letting those ripples in. They're a good thing. I'd also like to show you of just a few little fabric ideas for bias tape. There are times when stripes and other prints or checks make a really great accent. Here I have a striped fabric and a checked fabric. I'd like to show you what kind of look you would get when you do that bias binding strip. It could really make the edging of your project beautiful. Here is potentially what the stripe would look like. Bias cut strips, whether it's binding or trim or bias tape with a stripe is always really fascinating and a great, great accent. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, hit the like button and leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear what you think. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. We encourage you to show us your project or tools in use Feel free to post a photo on Instagram and use hashtag Nancy's Notions. Thanks for joining me. I'm getting a this facial now. Yeah. Huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got the glow going. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Nice shot. <laughs> I'm Kate from Nancy's Notions. Creating bias tape is an, is an exhibit. To set my stitches, okay. yes, I, I will repeat that okay. after we've shut off the facial machine.